beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet Lord Jesus, we are gathered here tonight to learn of you again. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit in our midst. We honor the spirit of the living God. Thank you for making us. Thank you for building us. Thank you for opening us up to the mysteries of the kingdom. Thank you for the empowerment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, O oh God, we ask that once again you will speak to us. There are people sitting trusting to hear you. There are sick people trusting your power to touch them. For in the sanctuary. That's what gives us the confidence. That's what makes the difference. For in the sanctuary, the healer is here. For in the sanctuary. Jesus, let the name of the Lord be exalted in Jesus' name. Just turn to your neighbor left and right. Just give them a big hug, a big smile. Hallelujah. You're welcome. God bless you. Be seated. Pastor Shegu, God bless you. Happy to see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're still on the series, The Emergence. And um, let's
Let's get straight to the business of the night. Daniel, please. Daniel. God is in the business of raising ambassadors of the kingdom. We live in a time in history when we need to understand the dealings of God across the nations. For us to be relevant in the kingdom, we must look beyond ourselves. Hallelujah. We cannot at this point just be looking for bread to eat, water to drink. The purposes of the kingdom is bigger than that. And so we must stretch our desire for spiritual things to be beyond us and begin to look at the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be examining the antichrist system the structure babylon hallelujah please i want you to pay attention the goal of the series the emergence is to bring us to a point where we realize that the church is god's strategy the church is not just an institution it is a strategy it is the name given to god's strategy the apostolic and prophetic strategy that will establish the victory that was shared upon the cross hallelujah and um, i began to tell us that there is a prophecy upon our lives and upon our generation understanding that prophecy and knowing how to walk with it becomes the key to being relevant in this season hallelujah so we're going to be examining the system there is a system there is a kingdom please follow me there is an operation of darkness whether or not you believe it there is a system that has been at the fabric of human civilization hallelujah and this system has evolved itself through time hallelujah masquerading itself in secrecy evolving through human civilization but one and the same system hallelujah because you see the contention of light and darkness is unto one goal an advocacy of an allegiance what you see happening in the world system today is the continuation of the desire of satan he began this from the heavens and was judged. And all through time, everything that has happened in human history is a contention of light and darkness to the end that the allegiance of mankind be submitted to an entity called Satan. And if we do not understand the happenings of this system, we will not... You see, the, the circumference of our understanding must transcend beyond healing. If, come, if this gentleman is sick and has cancer, for instance, and I lay my hands upon him and I say, be healed, and he's healed of the cancer, um, as good as that is, it falls short of that which God desires for us to know. Are you getting me? Because... The cancer in, is in his body because of an ancient story that predates even his existence. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. And we must understand why the contention. Why is the devil determined to oppress your family? Why is the devil determined to stop you from marriage or stop you from giving birth? Is it just because he doesn't like you? Is that all? Is that all to the story? Why the aggression and the hostility from hell? Why does the devil want you poor and broke? Just because he doesn't want you to have a house? No. You see that? There is an ancient story that predates our existence. And we are just in the middle of history. And we must come to a point where we are taught and we understand. We must connect to history. 
then we will be able to appreciate what Jesus did on the cross. And then we will be able to know our roles as individuals and as a church in returning the Christ. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel. Daniel lived in a time that was very prophetic, very strategic. The book of Daniel is an adumbration, a foreshadowing of the church, our mandate, our assignment. And the book of Daniel, theologically speaking, gives us the clearest explanation about the system of Babylon. Now, the Antichrist system over time has carried different names. Egypt, Babylon, Jezebel, the world system. Hallelujah. Regardless of the name you call it, it is one and the same system. Led by the same agenda. It has not changed. Strategies have evolved through civilization. But it has been one and the same. So Daniel found himself in a land of captivity. Alongside his friends, you know, in a place called Babylon and it was during the time of a king called Nebuchadnezzar. Kings in those days were like gods. They were literally gods. Aside from their physical stature like Og, the king of Bashan, he was said to be a Nephilim, a giant. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar was a very amazing king. And the Bible tells us that at a point he had a dream. And it was a strange dream. Can you help me with the fan? It's really shifting my Bible. Just shift it away from me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and called all his sorcerers and said, I need the meaning of this dream. And when he was angry that they could not interpret the dream, he said, go and kill them. And Daniel said, no, not so. Don't be hasty. Give me time. Hallelujah. Give me time and the interpretation will come and the bible says then the secret was revealed unto daniel and in the description of what daniel saw he saw an entity made of the head of gold i'm just rushing so that we'll get to the core of the teaching the head was made of gold right the chest was made of silver is that true from the stomach region down to the thigh it was made of bronze and then he began to describe that the feet was a mixture of, of iron. You know, the, the legs were iron and then the feet was both iron and clay. Now, it was a revelation of different dispensations that would come. And Daniel began to speak to the king that dispensations would begin to come. It was, it was a revelation of different appearances of the structure of this Babylon. A godless system. Hallelujah. But then, let me just recap a bit to help us understand. The Bible makes us to understand that a lot happened in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. I know that we know about the old story. I've shared it again and again here. But maybe for the benefit of those who have not been here for a long time, let me just recap again how that the story between mankind and the devil and darkness is an ancient story. Is that true? And I did tell us how that Satan is not the opposite of God. It's important for us to understand this. Because what we call eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations. Is that true? And that there was a dispensation where Satan did not exist. Is that true? Satan was created out of the predeterminate wisdom of God. There was a dispensation in time where he did not exist. Hallelujah. Job 38 begins to give us um, a lot of, of, of revelations when God was speaking with Job. Now, when Satan came on board, I told you that the office of Satan in heaven was what? The custodian. The name Satan is not the name of an entity. The name Satan, Satan, means accuser. 
right and devil means what deceiver so he said you shall cast out devils it's not the name of a person it's a generic name praise the lord and then the bible makes us to understand how that um this being was created and according to the order of his fashion because your office in heaven determines both your instrument of creation right and the kind of service you are going to bring and so lucifer was meticulously created using sound piped stringed instruments and i hope you realize that lucifer's jurisdiction of operation was the garden of eden remember i told you the garden of eden was not created for adam the garden of eden existed long before adam are we there lucifer was in the garden of eden the very garden of eden was his habitation and the garden of eden was not in the earth i hope you know it's still intact there there are different planes of heaven as we are taught in the bible the heaven of heavens is where god dwells but there are many other planes those planes are still existent today is that true are we following now i just want us to get the background so that we will understand this concept you see when you understand this there are certain levels of spiritual authority you will stand upon it will no longer be a guesswork or trying to jack yourself into their reality light has brought you into that truth some things no longer will exist because you have found something that is true are we following now and so on the strength of lucifer's office being the light bearer he had access to the presence of god and let me say it again i'm just doing a recap i've taught us how that angels grow by what excelling in light is that true that's how you measure the age in the realm of the spirit we don't age like time there is no time so you measure the age of spirit beings by how much they've had access to the throne room because every time you meet god there is an emission a rub off of his glory upon you right and even in heaven you do not visit the throne room every time because even at that realm the glory of god is too strong for you to come and stay there access is granted unto you hmm. praise the lord and so because of lucifer's function lucifer means the light bearer the custodian of the revelations of the heavens he had unusual access to the presence of god and it increased his beauty and his light even among the cherubims right he was the most valued because you see before man was created the order of heaven is the trinity now the father the son and the holy spirit but he was not called father i hope you know he only became father when jesus became son is that true so he was not called father god almighty jesus was called the word his name still is the word hallelujah and then the spirit of god so the organization was god now as we know father son and holy spirit we have the angelic keda right and then the head of the angels are the seraphs the head of the seraphs are the cherubims and the head of the cherubims was god so directly after the cherubims i mean god was the cherubims are you seeing that so that access but now when god created man what happened he took man making him equal right with himself the order changed so now the head of the seraphs is the cherubim the head of the cherubim is the woman the head of the woman is the man and the head of man is god christ now and the head of christ is god this is the structure are you getting the point now when you understand the proximity between the cherubims and women you will know why many women are under the influence of strong spirits hallelujah that's that's for another teaching you, you see you see that they seem to be the most vulnerable there is a reason it's not just because they are ladies hmm. get the teachings they are all available praise the lord and so this rebellion was led watch this the bible begins to tell us in ezekiel 
um, 28 and Isaiah 14, the manifesto of Satan. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God, right? He says, I will be like the most high. That's what he said. What do you think would have given Satan audacity to want to replace God? To be equal with God means to be a partaker of his nature. To be equal to God means you can replace him. That's what Lucifer wanted. Are you, are you understanding my story? And so he mobilized a lot of the angels in heaven. Apollyon, Leviathan, Baal, Mammon. All these were spirits. Mobilized them in a rebellion to fight. I'm, I'm just doing a quick recap. There's, there are teachings already on that. And for them to fight, they needed to change their original estate. That's what the Bible says. Original estate means your default position of creation. Because in heaven, um, how many of you have seen uh, maybe doctors when they are going for surgery, they put on their lab coat, right? There is an attire they wear because of their function. That's how it is in heaven. You don't wear clothes like this. Uh -uh. The, the garments in heaven change according to what you are doing. So if you are going to the throne room, you wear a garment called praise. It's not just a song. It's a garment. The psalmist saw it, right? <laughs> He said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that true? And so for these spirits to carry out their treason, they needed to leave their original state of creation so that they will assume a structure that will be able to afford them that which happened. And this was shown to John in the Isle of Patmos. He said there was war in heaven. And what happened? Lucifer. That's rebellious entity attempting to fight because he had known all the mysteries of God by reason of being the custodian of the mysteries and he said if this is all God is then I've read everything I know every possibility that can be in God are you getting my point point? and when there was that fight the Bible says woe to the inhabitants of the earth when it prevailed not remember revelations woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil, that old serpent has been cast down and he comes with anger and great fury. Now, the meaning of that is this. When it was obvious that Satan and his cohort, a third of the angels, the Bible tells us, would not prevail, in their bid to run back to their original estate, they were trapped from the heavenlies. Are you getting me? Never to be like they were again. And never to be like mankind. So by default, the devil and all his entities are in a perpetual state of torture. Aside from anything. So they cannot be in a state of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is, it is in the character of darkness to run to and fro. The book of Job. When he asked him, he said, from whence comes that? What did he say? Running to and fro. Jesus gave us a revelation that when a spirit leaves a man, what happens? That means... If they can find expression in human vessels on the strength of the fact that man is the highest of God's creation, they can assume some position of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Lucifer led that rebellion. And when it did not happen, he was cast down to the earth. Watch this. And something happened. Because you see, perfect love casts out fear. And if God is love for casting Lucifer, he must justify the fact that he was not insecure. And so he created man and gave man everything to prove that it was not because he was afraid like a politician fighting his rival. Are you getting him? Are you getting the story now? So he created man angels were created from light but man was made from the dust of the earth and the bible says god took his very cupboard that image what satan died fighting for and put in the man my goodness and then he made him in charge of everything when that was happening lucifer was watching hey lucifer was not somewhere moving around lucifer had access to watch he saw the creation of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
and when he saw man he saw god authorize him and give him the seat of dominion and then in eden lucifer's very habitation that was where man was kept are you saying that it's an old story you just know that something happened your father got up in the morning one leg could not move it's an old story it's not just the issue of healing anointing. It's about understanding the agenda of God. And let me tell you, when you know this, you will do more miracles unconsciously because there is a light from you that will emit everywhere you go. You become a true advocate of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? And so Lucifer, in that situation, came and started beguiling man and i told you that what happened in the garden of eden was a foreshadowing of redemption is that true because the bible tells us that authority was given to adam the man is that true but eve was made out of his nature so she was a partaker of the man's nature are you getting the point now and so when that happened they had dominion together satan ultimately wanted to take off the dominion and the only way he would take off the dominion watch this if god created man in his image right and put that man as the highest of his creation then it means if that man bows to satan what is he saying in essence if i am equal with christ and i bow to you i have accepted that satan is greater than him are you getting the whole dynamics of what happened in the garden and so for him to do that he came through woman watch this I want to explain to you a very powerful mystery please follow me Adam did not fall by mistake first Peter tells us it was the woman who was deceived not the man let me tell you why Adam fell Adam fell because according to God's system of love you have to love unto death to prove that you love are you getting what I'm saying husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church now that the woman had fallen the man had to follow her because of love that's why for Jesus to redeem us he needed to come down and be like us the same way Adam left his estate to be like his wife are you following me now are you getting the whole thing so Adam was not deceived when he fell immediately God looked from the heavens and saw the throne that he put man upon empty and when he saw that throne it was on account of that he said Adam where are you he wasn't just saying Adam are you naked what happened now you don't you know you are an adult that's not what he was saying hallelujah he saw the throne it was a spiritual position of dominion and when he saw it he said Adam where are you Adam said I had to follow this woman and God did not rebuke him because that was a true picture of love and he said woman what have you done she said the serpent satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of god and he said this and that will happen and he said the seed will bruise your head now understand that satan has known that god is prophetic in his statements the meaning of that was a confusion to him because until man came reproduction had never happened only creation they never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman all of a sudden satan saw me um i said mary um eve <laughs> getting pregnant and then she gives birth to cain and satan says this is amazing thinking cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied he entered into cain are you seeing that then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again and gave birth to abel and he made cain kill abel are you following me now Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest Let our King be lifted Oh, oh Jesus, you be lifted high, higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, 
Sorry, four. Four verse 16. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16, it's projected. Read, one to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from him. It means to depart willfully from his governing authority. Cain said, God, as far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain departed from the presence of God and he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings name cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, from this city, Christ, or God as we know, was not the head of this city. It was a city of rebellion. Are you getting what I'm saying? All kinds of human atrocities began to happen. Anger, envy, killing, rivalry. It was, an, it was the government of Satan. The first manifestation of the government of Satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. Are you getting this now? And the Bible says, the moment that happened, we see the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah in the Bible. It came in the person of Noah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of Elijah is not a person. It's not a prophetic spirit. It's the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God. Because he said, every time a revival is about to happen in the earth, there is a spiritual pattern. Elijah must show up. Is that true? When, when, when there was darkness all around, Elijah the Tishbite showed up, right? Micah, Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Is that true? Before Jesus showed up, who came? Elijah. In John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, this Babylon, the spirit of Babylon is a governmental system. It's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance. Please understand this. That is the reason why Babylon oftentimes would operate with kings. Notice that Jezebel married Ahab the king. The same spirit of Jezebel reemerges in Herodias, making sure the original wife of the king dies. And then Jezebel in Herodias marries the king. Is that true? Herod in your Bible and then demands for the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with the head of a man? In continuation to the vow Jezebel made to Elijah that I will remove your head. After many years, human beings change, but the agenda is still the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. So, Noah was the first manifestation of of a true son of God and, and, and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament right? We see in the book of Job 38, sons of God man was not even made that was during the creation of heavens the sons of God were rejoicing it's an office in heaven sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia. Three large stadiums. Right? Three story buildings made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth's time building that. 
he committed his entire life to build the ark and when that happened noah his wife the three sons and their wives entered in and what happened there was judgment is that true the whole race was white and out of eight people the spirit of the antichrist still thirsty for the continuation of the agenda what happened the bible says noah drank wine and he was drunk and then one of his sons saw his nakedness i've said it again that is a coded language that is more than just seeing a man's nakedness don't parents take their don't children take their parents to the hospital don't they bath them what is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause it was more than that he was not just looking at a man's nakedness there were mysteries that were given noah it was that mystery the spirit of the antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries because satan does not know the future i hope you realize that it's because he did not know the future that's why they killed many people during moses time if he knew he would look for moses exactly and kill satan is not so accurate you see the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations because speaking he said oh king of tyre he said thou which subdued the nations the strength of evil is deception 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 nations can be deceived and if we are to be ambassadors we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age if you're following me say amen after the judgment of Noah out of the eight people, Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism. He said, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass, this and that, the land of China. Verse 3. And talking about Nimrod now. Nimrod Kush. That man, Nimrod. Have you read about him? Nimrod, the son of Kush. Now, theologically speaking, Nimrod killed his father, Kush, and married his mother, Semiramai. And today, she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Antichrist entered into Nimrod, a governmental system. See it again. And he said, come, go to let us what? Build a city. Notice that every time that spirit manifests, it seeks to build a city. A godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock God. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, everything that has happened from Genesis 11 until Jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness. So the Antichrist system is not just a system of witchcraft. It's not just a system of perversion. It's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? This is a very powerful teaching. If you do not understand this, you, you will be in for a root shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory. Watch this. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, what happened? Matthew chapter 4, from verse 4. Satan, when he finished fasting, I hope you realize that all Satan had been doing. Do you know the reason why every nation fought Israel? Because of that prophecy, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The moment God entered a covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody. Because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people, when John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know, are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He 
Say, I'm the voice of one. Say, what, what are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. Say, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my, he said, behold the lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this. Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees, and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number two. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, jump. Jump. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> you would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse. Next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6 please. Let's go to verse 6. Or 7. 7. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay. 8. Let's look at 8. Okay. He says again, watch this. He says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today? That when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world. It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? It says Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed there to us the strategy of the advancement of the antichrist system. Watch this. This is how Satan markets it. In that mountain, there is wealth. In that mountain, there is job without struggle. In that mountain, there is free marriage without toasting. Look up, please. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he said, he took him up to that mountain and he showed him the glory. So watch this. Satan never tells you what you are to do. He first shows you what you will get so that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, All these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? <laughs> it says, If thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me. The Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom. Take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. 
right why spend years uh, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow bow down to me and own estates that's why the bible says what shall it profit a man have you read it in your bible if he does what that means you can do business with your soul the question is who is buying it you are the one selling it who is buying it? what shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul that means you sell your soul the question is to who who is this person that can buy and do business with souls revelations 18 let me show you we hail you most high i hail you most high revelations 18 let me read very quickly watch this it's going to be a long reading verse 1 revelations 18 verse 1 are you there and after these things i saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was made bright with his glory and he cried with a mighty voice saying what babylon is babylon the great is falling it says and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast watch this mystery verse 3 let's see if media can help us if you are fast enough to help us then fine otherwise i'll just go back to my bible for all nations have done what have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication that's why you see women representing that system jezebel babylon when they meet prospective kings when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man they come seeking a fraternity bow down to me fraternize with me and i will open the gates of the kingdom i will open the gates of wealth i will open the gates of grace are you getting what i'm saying it says and the kings of the earth have done what committed fornication with her and the merchandise of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacies she made them rich she made the man a governor she made the man a president Voting or no voting? Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of right nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie are you hearing what I'm saying there is a spiritual dimension to everything in life when you see somebody just get up travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire the Bible says ah, okay when well, verse 4 the Bible says in verse 3 that the Kings committed fornication with her let's run to verse 9 and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning so there is a prophecy the antichrist system will crumble are you hearing what i'm saying already there is a prophecy ahead that anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled. And there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour. All you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. 
I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself. In ancient times, the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that. Watch this. When Jesus came, Jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then from that time till now, there is a contention. And the contention is twofold. Number one, an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance. And then number two, to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of God. Are you seeing that now? So the first dimension is personal. That's what you call new birth. That's what you call salvation. A declaration that I choose. I have an option to choose between Babylon and this. I will show you how that many Christians suffer casualty because they claim they are born again, but they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right, fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a herbalist. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work a Christian you now come to work and you are under intense pressure because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance are you seeing how Babylon works so you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy the moment you enter the labor market they stop you they say not so who sent you whose allegiance are you in say anyone I need a job that's the point that's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shuts the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon, there is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's play. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace and they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five, five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So it uses different things. Mammon, it uses lust, it uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we we'll, would we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laugh. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. 
they control the information you hear they control the movie you watch it's a system are you getting what i'm saying now they control the stock exchange market wall street they control everything the governmental systems they define our scope of civilization and yet believers are there praying in tongues in church and we do not understand that we are the ecclesia the name given to the system that would take the authority of jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light please are you getting what i'm saying very important don't say it does not concern you don't say it does not concern you when you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from god and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well fff welcome babylon is at work are you getting what i'm telling you when a lecturer looks at you and says if you want to graduate you know what to do go and wait for me at the back of my office what is that the antichrist system masquerading itself now it's not even masquerading itself it's coming out openly a man looks at you and say look at your employment letter i tear it in your presence go back and say lord i love you anyhow god doesn't want that kind of prayer it's good to love him anyhow but the church must rise he says we are the city set on a hill we will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry the day jesus will come he will wipe our tears he can wipe your tears now are you getting what i'm sure i'm sharing with you the system Right now, little children watch cartoons and see. Right? All kinds of, 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 of things that should not be shown. Children are so addicted, not just because they want to watch. There is a, they have mastered the mind. Don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit. So little children love seeing blood. They love violence. You see a little doll baby, right? If they want me to buy this cup now, they will give this cup hips, right? This cup will have hips. It will say, use me. And you see the man rush, I want this one. Ten, bring ten of this cup. Why? Because it is a system. It has been fabricated. It was so subtle. We didn't know when it has evolved. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? seduction the seduction that's why it gives it the language of a fornicator the same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union that's what babylon is doing right now they determine everything everything they create the trends they do everything that happens they control our speakings our language right they tell you what to say they tell you what slang to say. They tell you what film to watch. They define what is civilization for you. If you do not assume a particular mode, you are not civilized. And it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend. One time, I, I, I think, um, I don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat. And they brought all kinds of things. I told them, I said, the work that I do, if I use these utensils to eat, I won't be satisfied. Get me a spoon. I don't have time for nonsense you bring all kinds of things i the bible says, he who does not walk should not eat that means he who walks you watch people in the restaurant sweating pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork right cutting themselves up with knife i must do it i'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized that's not what i'm saying but i'm, I'm saying you see a system has brought you under pressure right i saw one guy bab is here and bab dollars and i said this guy is broke he's poor now i'm not i'm not i'm not a religious person trust me but i'm saying it is the pressure he probably watched the actor of a film or a musician with dollars or something on his head and i must become like that the pressure of babylon are you getting what i'm saying there were times when our secondary school had decent teachers. You dress, you talking, you look nice. Now you go and see the people teaching. 
the guy enters as if he came to pick papers how are you students you see that and 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 the, and the students watch that this is the model this is the mentor that they have to become if we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach there will be casualty in the decades that are coming are you hearing what i'm saying it is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics people ask me question i say I, I don't like pdp i don't like apc i don't like anyone all i know is whatever promotes god's agenda i'm there it's as simple as that and we'll force the agenda of god to happen in this nation for sure for sure the church is alive don't you think the church is dead as ebola the church is very alive very very alive we sent it back to hell where it came from hallelujah there may be imperfections but the church is marching let me tell you jesus is found where the church is no matter what happens the church in nigeria is alive we are the firstborn of god who will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic christianity before christ returns yeah that rejected stone that why do you think boko haram and the rest it's not just about politics they are being led by an influence they do not know but the church will stamp them out next week i'll be showing you what we can do because they've made the church look powerless that if you don't have it's not just about finance there is an anointing jesus christ took his power and gave that system are you getting what i'm saying he didn't just call one person and say you i give you if you like this guy I give him no he took his power the power that will crumble babylon and said my ecclesia take it i've given it to you but we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this right we do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the christ let me tell you something this will come when things will happen in this nation you will be surprised you will wait and see tongue-talking christian bankers we will sack anybody who does not love God without apology. Look, look, look. Watch this. The members will be in our churches. So we are the ones who will teach them. And this big mouth, it won't keep quiet. My goodness. My goodness. That time is coming. It's coming. That's what you are becoming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. They don't know it. God has shrouded us in a mystery. When it's done with us, we will prove to creation that Jesus did not tell a lie. A witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true. If, I, if you steal our money and I saw you, right? And we're in court. They will say, stand, hold your Bible. Swear that nothing but the truth. The moment you finish, they say, did you see it? I say, I saw it. They say, prove it. I say, this is the picture. So the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross, there is a spirit that was there and he's in us. And in partnership with that spirit, we will prove that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. No longer allowing Babylon to kill our children. Huh? I wanted to cane one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss. I wanted to call him, use two fingers, and just whip him and say, Who taught you? <laughs> Probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look church i want you to wake up that's why we call this series the emergence there is an emergence the bible says obadiah 1 verse 21 it says saviors that's what he called them saviors shall arise brothers and sisters hear me romans 8 verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared there are people there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them it's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. 
if you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation you are in trouble there is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king and god gave us a sign he said when you begin to see darkness upon the earth start rejoicing it's time to arise are you not seeing what is happening in the earth the meltdown they've not seen anything a heavy melt because the selfishness of man will never allow him carry out satan's agenda somebody will betray somebody they don't have love they cannot love because love is shared abroad by the holy ghost love is not affection love is shared abroad that character that can make you almost die to protect another they don't have it that's what happened to Boko Haram they started killing everybody all and sundry when those who sponsored them started denying they say oh you are denying us let's everybody you are our enemy hallelujah listen to me brothers and sisters nations will crumble it has only started you, the pride of kings will be humbled. Their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see. Like Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall, when it writes upon your government is over. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Many kings have, they've, they've, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic. And vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic. And stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourselves there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere spiritually notice brothers and sisters that our our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children no cs huh what they used to cut the placenta of the baby we don't even know whether it's hot coal whether whatever they just cut that 13 times and nothing happened but here a woman comes because of her allegiance to god something happens they now start saying there's a fiber that devil is a liar there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Habalaba up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. They're rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. 
That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer. By depending on your boss for your daily bread, you are partnering with that. There is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires, not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom shown. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing. Like the ark of Noah, the spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing we will make our own programs we don't have dull people are you hearing what i'm saying there are many of you in your sleep you see these things in dreams you know that there is something about your life it's beyond abu it's beyond zaria some of you god took you wherever and brought you here god gave you admission with one taxi it's not about jam it's about an agenda hallelujah I see this thing every day as the nations crumble I see it as a signal God is saying son stand up stand up church rise up I call my bride the firstborn of God to arise but the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us hallelujah the the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was he was decorated a general last year i said that's right anybody that disturbs us will tell him he's part of kingdom advancement gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness are you hearing what i'm saying the kingdom will promote the ideology of god through one word it's called influence 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 that's why we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God -da 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 -da, on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money, but it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No. You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness. Sack lecturers that trouble our ladies. Employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord. Next week I will show you the strategy. I'm not just making noise. 
I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit. I'm not, a, I'm not a stupid person just making noise. There is a strategy. Lord, you were higher than any other. We will declare to the nations. Ah, God. Sing one more time. Say. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. The woman stood there. I was talking and I was just watching. I said, Mama, what is wrong? And they said, For five months, they've taken this woman to the hospital. They said, Arthritis, she cannot walk. I, I said, That devil is a liar. All of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw this innocent woman tied. I, from my head to her toe, I saw snakes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. For this purpose, for this purpose for that joblessness the every time you see a challenge say for this purpose for this purpose they said you will not graduate for this purpose they said no job will come for this purpose for this purpose for this purpose, for this purpose. everybody in your family is an idol worshiper but for this purpose you came god has taken you as an envoy to crumble babylon to crumble babylon It will happen. Forget about the pain of today. Hear me. Forget about the disappointment. I see men and women who will get married. Age two, your child is praying in tongues. Age two, a little boy, while you pray in tongues, he's praying. No, 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 no. Listen, we won't be fighting and beating our wives. It's over. We, by now, we know it's a spirit and we have authority against it. Men are not that bad. Women are not that evil. Babylon masquerading itself. Gone are those days. I tell you, all things are past. God is doing something new in our time. God is working something powerful in this day. God is building a mighty army in our days and he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is raising mighty men in these days. God is building a mighty army in these days. He won't stop, he won't stop till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him. Listen. Next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen. Don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen. Once God can find a man and find a people, he will do mighty things. He told Jeremiah, don't say I am young. Don't say I am a child. I will put my, my words in your mouth. You will subdue, you will tear down and you will rebuild. Hallelujah. Tonight I came to challenge you. Babylon is falling. 
what you are seeing in the TV is falling. The old wine has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church is rising. Watch this. Nigeria, I told you, I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God. But Nigeria as a continent, this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me. There are some things that if they don't happen this year, the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming. It is beyond humans. It's an agenda. It's the attacking of the firstborn of God. But God is always one step ahead. When you see the church pray and we speak, don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening. There is much that is being done in the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the dust settles, you will see a victorious church. He said, I will build. I will supervise that this church stands. I will build my church. But the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment. Look at me. One man cannot do this alone. One church, one ministry cannot do this. It takes a people who will say, Lord, we understand. Lord, we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost. There are many of us here. Your stand with God is not straight. We don't even know where you stand. As occasion serves. When in Rome, behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil. It's as simple as that. For you to be part of this army, your allegiance must not be confused. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? The gates will ask you, my brother, it's not all about business. They will trap you in that oil company. Where do you stand? You must answer the question. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? When you declare where you stand, and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to. As for me, I've made a decision. Thank God I'm going to be a father from the womb you know how john the baptist was filled with the holy spirit <laughs> many men are not responsible if your father here god is speaking to you take charge there are many homes you pray when there's trouble if they don't pay the man three months i say okay children let's come together and pray say let's pray because what god the attack coming to this family and you don't take your place right watch this forget about the flamboyancy you see on tv babylon is falling it's a prophecy babylon is falling and your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom go to your territory do you know how satan is ravaging our homes there are people in our homes with terminal diseases you are watching them take that authority and that anointing if nobody has told you you are anointed i'm telling you this night you are anointed do you know how things went bad in my family i had about i had about the things that surrounded my bed and i said satan you will pay for it ah you will pay for it Are you still afraid of the devil or should he begin to be afraid of you i told you it's an old story satan is not the opposite of god there was a day he was not existing satan has an exact creation date are you hearing what i'm saying the strength of evil is deception when you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory he will stay clear of your life some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain. Just a guy, this pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should? Eat? Look, I told you, take this word. Whatever goes wrong in your life, say for this purpose. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may what? Destroy. 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 
the church is the representation of the victory of Christ the church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy the church is the hallmark the symbol of the wisdom of God and we cannot fail there is a generation that must not fail we are going to pray look you must you must tell God I am available I am available some of you God is calling you from your slumber your spiritual slumber ladies God is calling you forget about that allergy and concentrate on God allergy gives you one million you insulted God God wants to make you a nation are you hearing what I'm saying quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch him bless you don't ever let any man fool you you know gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry people just look at you and say hey you mean it as if this kind or you say I'm going to marry a man of God they say talk his grace is of it. why are you going to talk like that you marry a busy businessman and you are happy I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man, right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? is our year of the rain the kingdom of god is a prosperous kingdom he wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate but he first wants you to understand this system anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of god realize that you are communicating your fraternity with babylon that becomes the basis your love for god and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil not the fear of satan are you getting what i'm saying i'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now why not just because i'm afraid of satan but because i realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for god and my passion my contribution to see his kingdom come and that love constrains me are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I said, no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covenant. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking that's not all. Two, the harpalist would die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there are, there are, there are madmen and there are madmen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel, somebody send a text. He says, it's so accident. I say, me. Hey! It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? Or somebody with a, a communicable disease? I've been doing this for years. My body is as healthy as a baby's body. Healthy as a baby's body. There is the reality of another life. That when it's at work in you, it will turn you into a superhuman hallelujah rise up we are going to pray i want us to insist on some things in the spirit please take this prayer session seriously
For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, I declare, I pledge my eternal allegiance to you from today. There's no going back. There's no bending. Lift your voice and pray. You are the Lord of my life. There's no confusion about it. What shall separate us from the love of God? In the secret and in the open, I love you. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. Pray. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government. My words under the influence of your government. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be you declare, I've been called out of every tribe. Hear me. Every tongue. Listen. Don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come. You did choose it. Don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. You came from this as though there is a curse upon your life and there is no way out. Prophesy with violence in your spirit. I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I challenge every power that is not of God. Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as a representative called out of every cause, called out of every covenant, called out of every ordinance. Pray. He make at his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire. I have no business with the ordinances of the fathers, with the ordinances of witchcraft. I willingly, I choose this day that I serve the king. I choose this day that my allegiance is to Christ of him. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is that as it is right now, there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by his name. 
and cause it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on. Now. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure. That pattern of lust. That pattern of addiction. That pattern of masturbation. That pattern of immorality. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the name that is above every Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Way out. I break the patterns. I of Jesus. I challenge the forces of darkness. Pray. I travel by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The sun shines for my family. The sun shines for me. I cannot go down. No way. There is a spirit of God upon me. Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, ma protoscopete. Command victory, establish victory, in pain, establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador. You carry a big. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with we stamp power and might. Sing it from your heart. It's a song of victory. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above I tell you, you will come out a champion. No power will keep you. yourselves into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you're praying for your sister prophesy Open the fountains of blessings. Open the fountains of grace. Come on now. Koinonia, pray. I call you blessed. I strengthen your is your season of the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it forth. Even God who quickened the dead and calls for the things that be not as though they were prophesy 
I call for that in your life. I, of life passion, I call it forth. I call it forth upon the dimension of wealth and abundance, supernatural jobs, open doors, new levels of revelation, new levels of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. We are going to pray. The election is by the corner. We are going to pray. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Zaria is our Jerusalem. We are going to speak to the borders of this city. We stay the hands of evil. The hands of bloodshed. You will not cross the circumference of this city. We hold the keys of this city. And we drive out every devil. Come on pray. Is your Jerusalem. There will be peace upon our walls. Peace upon our borders. Shalom Zaria. Shalom Zaria. We pray upon the borders of this city. The north to the south. We command peace. Shalom. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. We drive out every power. We drive out every force. We take charge of the heavenlies. We take charge. No death. No bomb blast. No bloodshed. In the name of Jesus. The church is praying. The church is praying. The government of God. The institution that carries his authority is praying. We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. This is not, no, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kogi State. Potakot, we command, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our nation. Even in the forthcoming election, let there be peace. Let there be peace. By the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Remember your firstborn, O God. Remember she that you died for. Remember your firstborn, oh God. For God and for God. We pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our families. Frustrate the token of liars. Turn their wisdom backward. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Alléluia. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we're going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life. And you are going to pray. There are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our lives. It's time to challenge it right now. You are going to speak. Whatever area, mention it. And speak. If it's marriage, say it. It must happen. If it's your finances, pray. The wisdom, the strategy, the grace. Lift your voice and pray. From glory to glory. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom unto him that answers prayer. Shall all flesh, and this is the confidence we have in him, that when we pray, he heareth us. It is within his power to grant us a request. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to begin to walk with this consciousness. I am part of the ecclesia. There is only one way the counsel of God can happen in the earth. The church. Only there are not many options the church is the strategy the church is the force that will conquer babylon so i want you to know that whatever it takes for god to demonstrate his might in the church he will do it he will do it for his name's sake he will do it for his name's sake walk in that consciousness it pays god in every way to bring breakthrough to your family it pays God in every way to make his word come to pass in your life. The question is to what degree are you willing to partner with him? Both in principle and in prayer. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind that in my life and in my time, the counsel of God must come to pass fully. 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 Hallelujah. I tell you all through from now till we share the grace it's going to be an encounter with the Holy Spirit the Lord gave me a revelation and said he will do something tonight that has not been done in a very long time in this place from the beginning of this meeting to the end much more encounters strange encounters Nina Kawo Yabo Sarkis Harama Nina Kawo Yabo Sarkis Harama Tiny Sarkis Harama Sarkis Harama Tiny Sarkis Harama
The Lord is speaking peace to someone. It will not destroy you. He speaks his peace to you. Regardless of all the trouble and the turbulence that you came here with, the Prince of Peace is speaking. Listen to him. Ah. It will not kill you. It looks like it will destroy you. But stand still tonight and watch the salvation of the Lord. No, the cancer will not kill you. The report will not kill you. When he comes, he brings peace. When he comes, he brings glory. Please be seated if you can. I'll be very brief. Whatever position you find yourself, be comfortable tonight. I want to be very brief. I already see the angels of the Lord. I tell you, the water has been stirred. There are things that will fall from heaven in this place tonight. Salama. There are, there is a kind of impartation God is already doing. Eh? Listen. An impartation is a transfer of possibility. Listen, listen. Many people don't respect impartations. Impartation is not about falling down and shouting. There is a release. Your life is only limited by the possibilities you can walk in. And there are graces. There are graces. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I'm speaking. There is a distribution of graces. There is a distribution. I came with an unction. I came with something heavy heavy from my place of prayer something came upon me from the throne room it's an impartation it's a release some of you this is what you need you don't need prayer there are limitations in your life because some graces are not there may my god put it i stretch my hands i stretch my hands i stretch my hands your life is at the mercy of the grace you carry i stretch my hands new wine new wine new oil new wine kato shaba dekes katala tosa dekete prekete de tokata rekete kete kete empre tokata the voice of the lord upon the waters is mighty new wine i release upon you that grace that unction that grace take it now something is landing on you landing on you that grace that unction new wine fresh grace fresh grace a dimension you have not known a dimension you have not seen fresh grace 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 pay attention to what God is doing tonight fresh grace you are only limited by what you carry as I'm walking towards you I'm walking with angels I'm walking with angels I'm walking with angels I'm walking with angels I'm walking with the angels of the Lord fresh grace fresh grace there is a presence fresh grace you must carry it you must carry it I don't have to touch you, I tell you. There are angelic activities. This is what some of you need. You will watch doors open. It's not just by shouting. Everything around you is implicated by what is within you. Let God just do what he's doing tonight. You came here because you want results. I show you the mystery of results. There is something that can come on you and change your life. It's not the challenges. It's the anointing. It's not the challenges. It's the anointing. Limited only by the lack of the anointing.
An angel is touching her. An angel is touching her. I'm seeing you entering a door, a door in the spirit. I hear in my spirit new favor, new favor, new favor. This is not a just new favor. Ah, yeah, someone is entering it right now. Is a realm, is a realm. You can enter it. Take her time. No matter where you are, inside, outside, all those who this word is upon, I put the word upon your spirit. What you are receiving tonight cannot be bought with money. It's more than a miracle. You are receiving a new season. Hallelujah. Listen. You've heard me say it again and again. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is. Is the difference. Your life is only limited by the grace. You don't have to change anything around you. Something just needs to come on you. That lady on blue, the Lord is saying breakthrough. That's what you came for. That lady on blue you are holding, breakthrough is over. It's over. The yoke is broken. It's over. Over. One more prophetic word for a family here. I'm hearing in my spirit and the Lord will locate them. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. The anointing will look for you. The anointing is like an address. Sounds of joy. Where are they, oh God? Sounds of joy. You must hear that sound. Sounds of joy. For joy is a force in the spirit. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Hallelujah. Let's sit down if you can for a few minutes. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Please pay attention. I told you there will be impartations all through. All through. All through. Even while the word of God is coming. When I saw the visitation God gave me in the secret place, I knew he was up to something today. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, listen, and with power. And then the Bible says, with that Holy Ghost and power, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. He didn't just heal them with compassion. Listen, listen, listen. He didn't just heal them with desire. He didn't just heal them with talk. He healed them and did good because he was anointed. You must be anointed for everything. Zeal is not enough. Results are at the mercy of the graces and the anointings that are at work in you. Our lives are defined, listen to me brothers and sisters, our possibilities in life are not defined by our backgrounds. They are defined by the kinds and the dimensions of graces that are at work in us. It is on the strength of this that men are different. They are not different in their biological makeup. They are different on the strength of what they are hosting within them. This is what creates a response. Your environment does not respond to you physically. Your environment has never been disobedient. 
what is on you controls the extent of the response of the things around you how God look at the extent to which Jesus was anointed and the Bible says he went doing good the measure of good he did was proportionate to the grace that was at work in him you don't do good just by desire please listen while I was leaving home to come here my heart was so heavy because there are thousands of people gathered and thousands others from different parts of the world following and now I'm wondering these people have challenges listen these people have mountains I got a text I think there's someone here is it a five-year-old child or something with cancer right here in this place tonight five years that's the woman right you are the woman no no it's not a word of knowledge just sit down they sent me a text look at that woman no matter what you sing and preach that woman has brought a child five year old with cancer what did the child do the child does not even have an opportunity to say anything the bible says that good that this woman wants cannot be done just with zeal and desire listen to me that good because there is a spirit sitting on that family and that baby it takes more than nice talk to set them free i will never be a man of god who will be a noise maker the problems of people are more than noise people need results in their lives look at that woman left adamawa because she came for an encounter right here and her father who had an accident was walking brothers and sisters hear me i repeat your possibilities are limited only only the little work with god and my work in the spirit i have come to the conclusion that your limitations are never a limitation caused by mountains they are limitations based on the extent of grace the kind and the dimension of grace at work in your life is what defines everything literally everything from favor to breakthrough to healing to speed regardless of what the problem is believe me when i tell you there is a dimension of grace that can solve it so our challenge is not to discuss obstacles our challenge is to contend to dimensions where every obstacle that is prevalent to man is under the jurisdiction of the grace we carry at that point you become a blessing when you love god and you love people you will stay in the secret place till you become anointed because that's the only thing you have to give people you can give people stories after this meeting now you will forget everything i've said just like you forgot what i told you during the miracle service the only thing you remembered were the prophecies i told you and the miracles you had as powerful as the teaching was last miracle service you frankly cannot remember it entered your spirit but it's hardly in your mind but you remember the pain you came with you remember the hunger you came with now we don't live and serve god just for miracles but brothers and sisters my simple teaching tonight and this is what the lord put in my spirit to share with us that miracles you receive listen listen this is you have to get this tonight the way you maximize miracles is not by experiencing them alone you must discern what those miracles mean because miracles are a code they are a language the voice of god is upon every miracle that he performs he is speaking something and it's important you understand what god is saying are we together now the miraculous every manifestation of the spirit of god signs wonders healings breakthrough prosperity favor open doors whatever they are you have not maximized a miracle if all you live is with the experience of it you must discern the voice of god upon that miracle and the language that he through that miracle is speaking to you that's how we are blessed by miracles every miracle is a language just like laughter just like tears these are different languages in the realm of the spirit 
and tonight God is using the miraculous to say three things to us number one I will say it exactly as the Lord asked me to say it mm. number one the first language that miracles signs and wonders healings speak is the language of God but the first thing God is saying through miracles is I am not the author of sin sickness and pain that's the first language of God that miracles reveal the moment you experience a miracle in your life is a language God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin I am not the author of sickness and I am not the author of pain John 10 10 says the thief cometh not in other words you never find him around except to do this to steal but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but Jesus made clear his manifesto he said but I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly so when you experience a miracle in that miracle God is speaking and what he's saying number one is that by this miracle let it be confirmed to you that I'm not the author of sin I'm not the author of sickness please listen you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the cause of sicknesses you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the source of pain God through a miracle is speaking a language my son my daughter you came with a door that is closed now I have opened that door it's a message to you that I am not the author of sin of sickness and of pain two scriptures quickly Mark chapter 1 please give us 38 to 45 very interesting reading Mark chapter 1 I just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the Lord has asked me to speak to us through his word and then we'll pray there are already miracles happening already miracles are happening Mark chapter 1 38 we're reading down to 45 listen it says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for there came I forth 39 and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils did you see that next verse please and there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him just like many of you have come to find out Lord is this how my life will end or do you have another plan here's his reply to you he's saying he kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean in other words I know you have the ability I just need to verify your willingness and this is what Jesus says 41 and Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him read on I will be thou clean I will be thou clean when you read from verse 45 down to 45 you will see that the man was healed so miracles are languages this is what Jesus is saying through the miracle I will I will you know that I am but it's important for you to know that I will do it you know I can make you blessed but it's another thing for you to believe I will do it the Bible says what things soever thou, des thou desire it said when thou prayest believest that thou receivest it and thou shall have it miracles are a language James 1 17 James 1 17 I tell you the presence of God is so strong I'm just seeing a fog outside I'm not even seeing people that's all I'm seeing like a fog thick fog all the overflows that's what I'm seeing outside and I believe that that glory is doing something in people no matter where you are whether you are sitting in the gutter on the fence on a tree wherever 
it truly does not matter now i know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside you think you are not seeing me directly it's not necessary james 1 17 everyone please read one two read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift is from above can mean anywhere so god clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so god says no so so you are not confused that i just said above it comes down from the father of light in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language god is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at god right now god you are the cause of my problems god you are the one who has not done this and that god is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of god spoken through miracles number two that i am a loving compassionate and merciful god the second language of god has revealed through miracles is that i am a loving comma compassionate and merciful god matthew 35 verse 36 the love of god is a revelation that we must have listen 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 the little time i have walked with god i have been amazed i know that preachers have preached about the love of god i have also read about it but i am amazed at the love of god for me my revelation of the love of god only climaxes at the substitutionary work of christ but there are things god has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that god loves me and now i'm not just speaking about general things oh you are breathing you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations i have seen god arise to do things in my life that i i, I sit back sometimes and i fight tears the love of god is a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of god his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the lord moved with compassion matthew 30 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected matthew 35 36 sorry let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up I think that's a mistake I said 35 forgive me let's go to first John first John 4 19 I think I skipped scripture I made a mistake there pardon me it was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus first John 4 are we there 19 please let's read let's hurry up because of time one to read everybody we love him because he did what who first love us 
the bible says god had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners right in due season christ died for us we love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us psalms 145 i found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to psalm 145 8 and 9 psalms 145 8 and 9 are we there Psalms. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. It says, Slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering, slow to anger, and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says, Rich in love rich in love the lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great mercy verse 9 the lord is good to how many the lord is good to he says and his tender mercies are over all his works so the condition to qualify for god's mercy is that you are created by him the moment you are god's creation you qualify powerful revelation mm. so regardless of what the cause of the sickness regardless of what the cause of the challenge is are we together now whether it was your fault whether it was carelessness it was a mistake regardless of what it is the bible says in god's economy there is a system where his mercy can work you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know why we need mercy? Because there are people here the challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of god are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can god show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of god was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and says come the bible said he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and i am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him put the signet ring he didn't even say stupid boy you are finally back never discussed as as far as is recorded in scripture never discussed the only thing the father said is my son was once was lost but now he's found i prophesy to someone here those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you you know it was your fault there is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that he can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger slow to anger 
the distance between where he is and his judgment he slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy there is no mercy in the realm of the spirit mercy is only in this realm that's why you cannot pray for satan to repent mercy is only a function of time and only those who walk with time can experience his mercy so he tied mercy to the morning he says your mercies are new every morning every 24 hours is renewed again ah, so that he showed you yesterday does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow god is a merciful god are you hearing what i'm saying now there are families that are probably damaged here because of carelessness there are many families that are in financial bankruptcy they didn't listen when they would have listened there are many things we are humans is saying is, is a popular saying he says to air is human is that true all kinds of self-inflicted things but tonight there is a system in God I know you have even concluded yourself but there is a system after Samson's hair was taken away and they were using him to mock God in the temple they thought they plucked his eyes and the hair would never grow back again and Samson lifted up his voice to the God who was full of compassion and all of a sudden his strength returned and the Bible says he killed more people in his death I'm speaking to someone here they've not seen speed yet till you experience the mercy of God I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if when you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had HIV now you are born again and you love God does God have to leave you like that to die no sir no sir no sir every time sin was cured sickness followed if God has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal HIV do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened it's a different thing if you're a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of God only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart rebels never experience the mercy of God so when your heart is broken and contrite you're about to receive something that will change you hallelujah I was supposed to go for the job interview but I stayed overnight playing games and I slept I woke up by 10 the interview was over I've missed the job now the mercy of God can still speak for you I told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed three years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement God must find a way of bringing the balance of three years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly. When God brings miracles, he reveals his sovereignty, not just his love. So he tells you that I am a God of love and compassion, but I am also mighty. I calm the sea, I calm your life. I am worthy of your trust. I am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen i am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to god there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management 
of your life to God. Come and learn of me, he says. Take upon me. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When it is killing you, it's not of God. Hallelujah. Is God dependable enough for you to suck, to hand over your whole marriage to him? Is God dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways? Is God dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him? Do you know when you see people carry talisman, carry charm, carry arrow and all these things they move around with to aid protection. Do you know what they are saying? Even that act of stupidity is also a language. God, I don't trust you enough to depend on you. Mm. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. So when you see the sovereignty of God, quarter to shame, he steps in for you. It's a language. He's saying, I am that mighty. And as a result, hand over everything. You know, my concept of born again is not that you recited um, the Lord's prayer, salvation prayer. Reciting salvation prayer for me is not born again enough. You are born again when I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life. You give God academics and leave finances, you are not born again. You are a rebel in that area. Do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God? He cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it. Your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting his word. Our fears, our insecurities make us to come out of alignment. So when Jesus came, his message was repent, go back. You've trusted God concerning every other thing. When you thought the carryover will come, you saw it change. Now for job, you are trying to maneuver your ways. There is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him. Hundred missed calls, his foolishness is a sign that you do not depend on God. Tonight I'm encouraging you by the miracles that God will do in this place he's speaking to you and saying can you not see that my life your life is safer with me than it is with you are we together protection people are afraid of dying listen the world is so vulnerable you don't have to be outside to die people have sat down inside about to take the first spoon of food and they collapsed and died mysteriously there are arrows that fly by day. You can only rebuke the ones you know. What of the ones you don't know? The safest place to be is under. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, it says, shall abide under the shadow of His wings. Like a hand covers the children. A hand, may, you can slaughter chicken. But not when children are under it. You can catch it when it's roaming around. But when a real responsible head has the children under it, you come near there, you lose your eyes for it. Have you seen a chicken that violent? Yeah. So God is a merciful God to you. But wait and see what he is to those who want to trouble you. That's why the psalmist said, How he said, Many are they that trouble me. Many are they that says, Where is your help? He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a what? Shield. First. God will shield you so that you calm down and then now turn and deal with anybody who is causing him in your life. That's what will happen to somebody. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. If you believe in God and you believe in miracles, most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean. So all of a sudden, if in a few minutes now, the pain suddenly disappears. You don't just go back saying, wow, this, this koinonia is powerful. No, you have experienced the miracle, but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it. If God suddenly, by tomorrow, someone calls you and gives you a land, opens up a door for you, untold wealth within one week. 
if you just get excited and say finally i am rich you have experienced the miracle but you have not discerned it you must know that god is speaking there and saying it is my might that one is not love you are seeing that one is my might i can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week can you depend on me that's why you see most people pastor jakes don't discern miracles that's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it i have learned from every dealing in, of god in my life a dimension of him like mike said it so powerfully there are names god wants you to know not the ones you've read in the bible he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of god enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of god you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of god let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or apostle told me or i had a vision or i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first you say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your and say oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again Do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but God is listening to the voice of your spirit. You are, you, are ramp, you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear. And God is saying, if you trusted me, you would have been quiet by now. Imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now. Pastor Alpha and Mike, you are just moving and then later I tap us and say, ah, you stop praying, let's pray. Shabaladaba. Lord, in the name of Jesus, gravity is still working. I, I know this. Is that, is that, are you, are you a, an intelligent physics student? No. That, there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes god does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is is just at best oh if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45. you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100 See, I have constructed my belief system such that, believe me when I tell you, there are some things that cannot enter my mind again. If I pray with you, you'll be very frustrated. Because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say, oh God, Baba, this and that and that. There are certain things you know about God that gives you rest. That's why I say, come unto me. You have been moving, you are going on to anybody. You are moving, he said, come unto me, all ye that are weary. What wearied you? Running around like a roaring lion. That's the spirit of Satan that makes people 
God, he, listen, listen. Is Satan that moves around like a roaring lion? God only moves his eyes, not his body. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro. Satan has to physically run up and down, and you are down joining him. So he said, Come unto me. This running around has wearied you. I will give you rest. Have you seen somebody rest? When you say rest in peace, is the person moving around? Have you seen somebody dancing and you're about to bury him? You are wicked. You bury people who are quiet. Be still. Stillness, stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith. Turn and prophesy to someone and say, Be still. Say your running around will not bring you the, the problem, the answer. Say it, say be still. Your phone calls, go, say it, your phone calls, text messages, and running around will not bring you the answer. Be still. Your lack of sleep, continue, will not bring you the answer. Discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer beating your wife whether you are married or not say it say beating your husband too will not solve the problem harassing your children will not solve the problem committing suicide will take you to hell look do you know People who claim they don't have energy, I'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of God and die there and say, Lord, this thing, whether or not it is answered, I'm already in trouble. There's no other trouble to enter. So let me stay in your presence and die there. There is a way you put pressure on the integrity of God. When he knows he's the last card truly in your life, you'll be surprised to see what he will do many of us have options you must follow him he said if you will not believe me believe me for the work's sake believe that i am in my father and we are one there is a oneness in us i handed responsibility to my father and i submitted to his authority it gave me rest brothers and sisters any miracle that does not draw you closer to Jesus listen even if that miracle was produced by the power of God if it does not draw you closer to Jesus you have not really received the real miracle you have received the experience but you have not discerned it to make you grow I am surprised that the more people receive miracles they now run away from God when Zacchaeus had a miracle he dropped down from the tree gave up his, his um, tax collecting work and immediately walked with Jesus when Peter saw the miracle of the fish he said go away from me I'm a sinner and Jesus said no come 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 and sit down let's eat together miracles draw people you are a drunkard you don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of of Gulda. you have been sitting here for hours now the urge is not there that's a miracle the miracle is not so that immediately after koinonia you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep you have frustrated the grace of god you know let me tell you something by god's grace i believe in miracles but i also believe the message that miracles give we don't discern the languages we only gyrate in the experiences that's why satan corrupts when a native doctor gives you a miracle he, he attaches a message to it he says by this miracle know that this small thing this horn you are seeing is powerful and when you receive that miracle you will go back to the man again there is nobody who runs away from result when you receive results in an area you stay there if the result is consistent you camp there so that you visit god's presence receive a miracle and run away and only go back now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle stay there Tell your neighbor stay with god please prophesy say stay with god there are people here as they are saying stay with god the holy ghost is speaking to you because i don't care whether you are born again or not 
the kingdom is not a priority to you you probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up yes god will touch you but if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house you have not discerned it. miracles genuine miracles produced by the spirit should draw men to god so when you see the favor it brings tears in your eyes and you say lord i will walk with you forever i've tried every other thing but i've settled with you say amen the last message that miracles produce there are many more but let me just stop here oh scripture for the third point john 10 30 to 38 just write it and you go and read it later our time is gone john 10 30 to 38 the next point what god is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that god is speaking to you that if i can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed god is saying something he's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom god will use to produce the miracles i know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see jesus that's true but listen to what father abraham told lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out of body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at in touch with god so if he tells you jesus christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one you have not discerned the miracle are we together now if i come and stand on stage here and i'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation that is a message it's not just it's not about really about a man but it's the fact that god is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with so you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to god forget about the imperfections that will come you are not alone the holy ghost is there to see through it what if i listen to everything and i fail no how did they write the bible How did they write the Bible? All kinds of people wrote the Bible. Temperous people. Bad people. But in the midst of it, the purposes of God were still preserved. Holy men wrote. Regardless of their imperfections. Let me tell you. There is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have. God will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to his people with the level of purity that they need. Whether it is intellectual limitation. Hear me. Whether... It is spiritual limitation that is why a donkey can talk do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn english when men of god pray for utterance utterance is not oratory utterance is the ability of the holy spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light that it be accurate and with minimal if any corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors that's utterance utterance is not the ability to speak english that's oratory utterance is a spiritual thing the capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners they will receive that one you have to pray for it you go to school to get oratory but you stay with the spirit to get utterance hallelujah Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly 
God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that he appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will so God confirmed their word you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me but he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you you will just walk out of this place and my God like the chains of Peter fell you will see chains just fall and leave you it says God bearing them witness so what are miracles instruments of witness God validates the fact that this person is my servant listen to him he has been approved like you have NAVDAC registration number on water now there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have NAVDAC registration number when they catch them you find them whether they are sincere or not they were not approved we're about to pray Isaiah 44 verse 25 and 26 two scriptures and then we'll begin to pray that staring is happening again Isaiah 44 25 to 26 listen talking about God now the God that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it divine as mad the Bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish listen to what he does 26 that's what he does to them but this is what he does to his servant that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers what is the confirmation of the word you are blessed if it happens it's a confirmation what is performing the counsel be healed and immediately you are healed that's a performance that's creation like a woman is in her, her father is in Adamawa and she's here in Zaria and a word comes and all of a sudden she goes back and the man who had an accident now is walking he performed the counsel so if there is no proof in your life among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved they no 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 you can be a servant of God but not yet be approved being called does not ever mean being approved approved means you have been released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake no the opposite of being approved is being real but unapproved there are many unapproved genuine servants of God unapproved genuine servants of God in ministry for many years ask Isaiah he was prophesying but he was not approved 6 verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah saw the Lord a call was taken and given to him is that true he said here am I send me God didn't say I'm already sending you that was when his ministry started you can be doing a lot of things the opposite of being approved get this the opposite of being approved is not being fake fake is in another category you can be real yet not accredited like you are a student but you don't have a certificate yet you are in school you are intelligent you may even be on IT you may even be doing projects but it doesn't make you a graduate there is a certificate do you have it many people just stand and say the bible says this sign shall follow i am a believer be healed we keep mocking ourselves with nonsense because when you read the bible intellectually you will get not head sophia human wisdom you must read it of the spirit tarry in jerusalem he had told them many times do you know before he said tarry ye he had sent them one time he said go two by two what happened to the power that is now saying tarry until ye be endued what happened to the power that they came back blind I saw he gave them his name they were not yet approved they only went in his name 
that's why i say don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there if i tell you the dynamics of the result you didn't participate the most important thing is that you must be a part of this family your names being written in heaven approved when you are approved it's like a register in the realm of the spirit so when god is paying approved servants you receive your share you are not receiving salary find out whether you are employed that's why the bible says those he called he glory he, um, those he predestined he called but he has not glorified them yet those he called after a season of building he now glorified them if a man will punch himself that man will be a vessel unto honor he can stop there as a vessel unto honor comma meat for the master's use believe me many approved singers not mistrials in the spirit they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs Help, please. and you sing all kinds of minor songs you think the secret is in clashing cymbal because joshua Simon is doing it you harass every drummer to clash every cymbal no show me the certificate let no one trouble me paul says for i bear there is a batch demon said jesus i know we see his certificate a man approved of god approved of god approved of god paul the apostle was approved of god let me tell you every true servant of god who has worked with god and has a dealing with god is approved and when he's approved immediately whether you are called into the ministry of helps there must be a sign from heaven when jesus was born he was approved of god there was a sign a star arose on the day of pentecost that experience was approved of god there was a sign every time there is approval there is there is a sign where is your own it could mean you are not even in the school completely or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit there are two different things like there are people in abu some are selling rice some are uh, some have some some are selling um things you are inside abu but you are not in any faculty so you can be in the kingdom but not in the school of the spirit only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still i like you to pray in one minute and say lord i'm in your school oh nothing is taking me out of there i'm not only in the kingdom i'm in the school of the spirit the place where men are made with power the place where men access the presence of god superior dimensions of spiritual reality pray in one minute thank you father for being in the kingdom i gave my heart to you and i'm there but lord i walk with you consciously in obedience he that endures to the end he shall be given a crown and a white stone there are rewards not everything in the kingdom is a gift brothers and sisters there are rewards that's why there are diversities of results if there are no rewards everything will be possible for everybody at the same time because the lord is rich unto all why are there disparity in results is disparities of trainings just like you have a professor you have a master's holder you have an undergraduate you have a secondary school certificate holder different seasons that provide different accesses to graces lift your voice and pray hallelujah second corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now god will do a quick walk second corinthians 12 verse 12 by this little teaching i I'd like you to desire more in god more in god greater grace a time will come your talk will weary people they'll be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of god second corinthians 12 12. paul was speaking about his credentials 
you used to know me as a scribe but i had an encounter i was in the wilderness of arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name i am apostle jeffrey i am apostle joshua selman no i am pastor this i am reverend this the word apostle there does not does mean apostle like an office the sign of an approved and a sent one when navdak approves approve something no matter what the drink is there is something they stamp there no matter what it is check somewhere even if there's no space they create space and stamp it it is based on this brothers and sisters that we can gather people like this by grace and say come this is not the issue of my personal faith this is the issue of a navdak number koinonia is registered this is like you have jam center there is jam center that is for crooks when people go there they don't even write exams is that true you pay money but there's what they call uh, what they call it approved centers when you go there you sit down there are tables they have gone through a, tra a training by the grace of god by the election of grace and by our determination to take advantage of it truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in what was the first thing the first sign is not miracles the patience to endure till you access it the first sign of an apostle a saint one is not signs and wonders many foolish people deceive themselves the first sign is patience for many years you will walk with god and not see one result the first sign is patience you will prophesy nothing will happen you will pray for the sick nothing will happen but you are still in the school so patience then in signs notice the progression signs trickles then it now moves to the next realm wonders then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works that one is not personal miracle that is territories elijah stands and said there shall be no rain look at the progressions these four levels if you don't enter this level in ministry you will never be fulfilled there are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again i will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave on to one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters i want you to trust three things tonight as we pray one listen 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 number one believe in your faith in god and god's faith in you two listen believe in the covenant that we have with god i told you that our work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant there are covenants that men have with god let me tell you listen i can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister i will minister by the covenant my relationship with god is something he will deal with me with later on but as far as the covenant of using my life my grace and koinonia to minister 
not even me can stop it that's why when elijah died the covenant was still on his bones elisha his bones still raised the dead because the grace on him was authorized to do that not whether he was living or dead that's the basis of mantle transfer that's the correct basis of mantle transfer that when you touch a man or shake a man you are going not with a material you are carrying a covenant to your home god stops dealing with you now based on you it is on that basis we can say the god of this when you say the God of Isaac, there's something about God and Isaac that makes him hear you. The God of Jacob, there's another thing. I don't encourage people to say the God of Joshua, Selman and this, but brothers and sisters, there are covenants. There are men, God, enter the covenant with them like Joshua. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He didn't say where you do well. That's the covenant. This house you see is a mystery of covenants covenants here and there that's the reason why we make certain bold claims i truly believe that if all i use is just my personal faith i will be afraid i have eyes i'm a human being you can see cases that you know are impossible but there are higher dimensions rise up on your feet let's pray i've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free Please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Lord, I believe that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Are you praying? For surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works. Listen, in one minute, please, young old, just walk with this instruction. Mention clearly the issue of concern and say, Father, visit it. Don't just say god bless me that's not a very wise statement be very exact he said give us this day lift your voice and pray in one minute please pray passionately emmanuel we want to see you pray we want to hear from you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, we want to hear from you. broken burdens are about to be lifted families are about to rise pray Emmanuel such grace in this place such grace listen listen there are spirits you've heard me say it 
that tie down men there are spirits that tie down destinies there are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people when you come into the presence of God like this some of you are lovely innocent people you love God with all your heart but certain things are not going well with your life those spirits must give way there is an anointing don't be afraid don't ask whether it will happen it's not just your personal faith you have believed God that's all right leave the rest to him whenever I call you you will answer me my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you oh God my secret place is calling is calling you oh god take my breath oh god take my breath will you take my breath take my breath it's calling you all right we're ready let's go lift your hands I want to pray for you that every spirit and every force my God I see so many people so many people who will be delivered so many people who will be delivered I want you to bring them out the anointing is here it has come lift your voice at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus inside and outside I come against every spell every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dagon crumble are you ready now at the count of three one two three take it, take it, take it, take it. my God charms 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 I'm seeing charms I'm hearing in my spirit charms bring them out charms charms Divination, instruments of wickedness, divination, I curse you, Katokata, outside, the angel of his presence, outside, sweeping like rain, that view, divination, instruments of wickedness, I command you to leave, I command you to leave, the place of his power so katatata reketekete empros katalikata reketekete sheketeko katata balaba lift your hands my god my god my god listen i'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit this thing that they count there's this thing that they count one by one in the name of Jesus that's what I'm seeing and the Lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination people are about to be set free now Lord I don't know where they are but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside in the name of Jesus let it go I release that fire now help them right now right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost no devil will stand it I assure you no devil will stand it whether you are inside or outside there is grace to set you free I command divination I command yokes broken lift your hands and pray I'm seeing a number in the spirit 74 and the Lord is telling me that's the number of people that must be delivered from the spirit of delay lift your voice this delay is a wicked spirit I want to pray you may not know you belong to that category is the anointing that will fish you out guys be sensitive please please 
in the name of Jesus 74 people Lord wherever they are I stretch my hands right now the spirit of delay at the count of three I like you to shout Jesus one two three let them go now let them go now the cause of delay the spell of delay so Those outside, only those outside, lift your hands. The Lord is directing me. Those outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. First overflow, second overflow, and online. There are certain people that will be picked by angels. Strong delay spirit outside. In the name of Jesus, are you ready? Just those outside. One, two, three. Command that spirit. There's fire outside. He must go now. He must go now. Leave that sister. Leave our destiny. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, Faith. Are you Faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Faith. Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. Our time is constrained. We wanted to make it a vigil, but we are off to Lagos tomorrow. Just Faith. Let them come. Are you an usher? Usher, lift your hands. You are the first person to receive the miracle that I'm praying for. I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing an usher. God is saying he's visiting your family right now. Receive that grace now. Right now. Let that devil leave our family. Go. Delay. Out of our family. After that you can do your ushery work. Look at me my dear. Where are your parents? Huh? Where is home? Where do you stay? You are faith too? Huh? Let me pray for you. Hold my hands. It's not just you I'm praying for. Look at me. I want to pray for your family. Your family is being greatly oppressed. Huh? Go and tell your parents that a man of God prayed for them. I'm seeing a family that came from Abuja. That's what the Lord is showing me. Abuja. Not just a person. Like a family that came from Abuja. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Supernatural miracle. Miracle. All of you, your names are faith. Hold on. Please hold your hands together um, so that we can save time. We still have sick people to pray for. We are going to be very fast. It won't take long. I want us to finish very fast tonight. All the faith. I'm going to pray. Your name is faith too? Osha. You are an Osha. You are a worker. You will receive your own differently. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you beauty. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beauty. All the faith. I'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you. Father, I don't know why they are out, but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now. To every one of them. Right now. Right to all of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that we will save time. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a family from Abuja. Where are you? Please let me speak to you. From Abuja, clap for Jesus as they come quickly, please. Hold on. Who is sick? Who is sick? Who is sick? My chest. Your chest has a problem. Yes. You sleep in the night yes. and you feel as if there's something on it. Yes. This is witchcraft. Yes. But someone else is sick. I'm saying, where are you from? Abuja? All of you? Yeah. Hold yes. on. Yes. All of you? 
Yes. I didn't say if you are from Abuja, please. You are a family from Abuja. Hold on, hold on. If they are here, don't push them. Let's be gentle on them. Why is he there? Okay. No, you don't have to. Those under the anointing, listen, listen. When people are under the anointing, especially for deliverance, there's a reason why they are out. Don't just lift them and push them. You can shift them. There's a reason why we ask them to come out. It's not to show they are falling. You already saw them fall there. You are the one from Abuja. Lay your yes. hands. Come. Let me lay my hands on you. You are scattered. You are all the same family. All of you. The ones at the back. Are you the same family? You are on your own. You would have sat down there, my brother. My sister, two of you. You are together. I will pray for you. What do you want God to do for you? Please, we don't have time. If you are not sure, I will just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. I need employment. Employment? Yes, sir. Do you love yes, God? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Seriously? Yes, sir. What of you? I want to follow my education, sir. See, it's not everybody. I'm just speaking on behalf of your family. We don't have all the time. I have to pray for you, my brother. Huh? God will heal you. And then for you. What's wrong? He has diabetes. That, I said there's somebody sick. Yes. You heard me say there's somebody sick. He's having chest pain, but this one. Leave chest pain. Chest pain is not this. This one is witchcraft. It's not sickness. This. Okay. We have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound. He has a wound inside. And the wound is not healing. We have to pray. Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one, but I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother. Your chest from healing. You go and get a job in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's done. Go back to your seat. Please come quickly. Let me pray for you. It's done. I pray for you. Why are you here? Huh? God should what? Set me loose from Set you loose. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two, you are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need, you, you heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I release an anointing upon you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God. Then this one has breathing. Breathing problem. They are all your children. They are, children. They are all your children. Hold them. It's you I should pray for, not them. The, the children are just reacting to something. I have to pray for you. Eh? Things are not going on well. Where's your husband? He's abroad. He's abroad. How long has he been there? Getting to a year. What I want to tell you, eh? It's not something I will say in the open. Are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's that's all I will say for now. Eh? And I'll pray for you because you see. Any success? No, let hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding her hands? You are sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial victory. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job, finance, and then you have the call of God. You're a woman of prayer and God shows you dreams. Is that true? Where's the mic? Yes, sir. God shows you dreams. Yes, and you are wondering, you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now because that's your fear. You see the anointing is on her? 
that's your fear you don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man God will send into your life and it's because you're a nice lady you don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry this is I'm hearing you discuss with a friend huh and that's so God is going to solve that problem for you but you let's pray hold my hands father what God has joined together the Bible says let no man whether whoever man also includes woman man doesn't just mean a male figure man includes man plus every jezebel that represents a system and i'm using i'm not saying your husband are you getting me now this is not something i'll say here i want to prophesy any marriage any couple that are married now and there's anybody looming around to reap where you did not sow in the name of jesus we scatter that nonsense right now You will hear testimonies from this thing I just this little prayer has delivered somebody right now. Father, let there be miracles. The spirit of infirmity, I command it to live your life now. In the name of Jesus. Bring the children, please. Where's the one with the heart problem? Uh okay, look at this adorable baby. Heart problem. Heart. What did they tell you? They said there is a swelling. A swelling in his heart. Hold it for me. It must go down. Because this baby now will not grow well. How many of you know that the baby will not grow well? You may not know what is wrong until he grows. Then certain things that should happen to other people will not happen to him. I know a lady that I prayed for. She doesn't have a womb. I'm not saying it's not developed completely. No womb like that usually it's these kinds of things um you know at the point of conception several things happen jesus in the name that is above all names i pray in the presence of your people this is why you sent me by the power of the holy spirit let this heart become normal now you see it? you see what is happening i told you is the mother that should be prayed for i'm praying for him and see the person falling under the anointing because that's where it came from it returns to hell now i can't hold this one it's big in the name of jesus supernatural miracle see the anointing is on her too somebody come and hold her please hold her hold her god is healing the baby and healing her too. two of them hold her the anointing is on her God has removed something from your family related to this. There's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing. You are an usher while you held him. That's why the anointing touched him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to prophesy on two people. They will come under the anointing now. Please bring them out. Just two people right here indoors. There's an anointing that is coming on two people right now. Thank you, Jesus. The, the Lord is just giving a word. We're going to pray for the sick now. Two people. You can't stand it. It's like fire. It will come on you. Please bring them. August. Is it Augusta? Augusta. August. Augusta or August. Something that looks August something. A name. Augusta or Augustina or something like that. Please, anybody with that name. Augustine. Sir, this man, come. This this fair man, come. Your breakthrough has come. There's a lady outside that August something. You are outside in the overflow. There is another one. You are wearing chain. Chain. Like uh, this thing they wear. Is there someone like that? Not you, sir. You? There's somebody you're wearing. I want to pray. Uh, ah! Look at you. Lift your hands. Look at me. Shout, I avoid trouble. Shout it. I avoid trouble. You are speaking English. Shout it. I avoid troubles. Because I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December. And we have to pray against it. And this is something that is, is something you are vulnerable to. But in the name of Jesus, no trouble. By the power of the Holy Spirit, no trouble. In the name of Jesus, you don't stop them, you just guide them. In the name of Jesus. Sir, I want to pray for you. God is about to change your life. 
you are a man look at me sir two things will happen to you i say it in the open you will come and stand here look at me one look at me sir a level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your amen. life amen amen is what is going to come amen. upon you amen i want you to believe it sir it's not just because maybe uh, i'm talking to you because all of that that's number one number two is that i want to pray for you i'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest this is bp yes, sir. huh yes sir. you have bp yes sir. did you tell me no, sir. i have to pray on it if i don't pray on it you are going to have serious problem because i'm seeing you go to a doctor maybe now or in the future and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt All right, salt like completely i don't know what that, but i think something that has not to do salt so i have to pray for you i'm going to pray for you and any other thing you came here with hold my hand sir with both of your hands i want you to believe father there is a grace for prosperity receive that grace in the name of jesus is there is an anointing that makes men prosper look at me sir in the name of jesus i release that grace god gave it to me i pray for you again in the name of jesus that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper may it come upon your life in the name of jesus christ god bless you sir and bp come sir let the bp be healed now in the name of jesus Huh? what's your name what's his name augustine augustine augusta thank you come you are the one who needs deliverance i'm going to pray for you but lift your hands i'm looking at you and i'm seeing uh now this is not death but i'm seeing you know how a place has been deserted like a wilderness that's what i'm seeing as i'm looking at you and i have to pray for you because if i don't pray for you are you married huh? no, if i don't pray for you number one you will not get any reasonable man to marry you it's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious huh? in the name of jesus for you and your family be set free right now by the power of the holy spirit i open up those doors jane 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 you are a fair woman looks like an evil lady you are wearing it like a sleeveless jane sleeveless something like that who is that huh i'm the one look at she's surprised you think i'm a herbalist i've been talking to people why are you looking like um one the first miracle is there's something in your stomach yes sir. is that true yes did you tell me yes, sir. something is biting you physically like a snake it moves down to your breast region and comes down there yes, every day yes, sir. that's the first thing god is going to do stand up number two see she doesn't want to stand up stand up madam mm. ah. kai you are a good woman but you have suffered i have to pray for you somebody came into your life and did something i cannot say in the open you have been crying till now you gave this man everything is that true yeah, right. everything you gave this man he rubbish your life into zero and went away when i was preaching about mercy god was talking to you yes, sir. huh yes, sir. don't worry the man even said you're a fool God will use the foolish things and confound the wild. Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. This, this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hand. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture, lift it high right now the power of god will touch you lift both of your hands there's anointing coming on you right now that's it your prayer is answered it's done completely the miracle for which you are lifting that picture for completely is gone may your life turn and change like day and night in the name of jesus i close every door you have opened in your life and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, four months. 
there is someone you're a businessman you've not done anything for four months it's like you are i don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something four months you have been completely grounded i don't know if you are inside or outside please run god wants to pray for you why are they here jane i want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick Madam, I finish with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you. If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane, your name is Jane. You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things, these are the things you came for. I release upon you grace don't be confused things are about to turn around in your life come you need a helper somebody helped you you did not thank him you didn't thank him and this thing has affected you doctor doctor I'm seeing a doctor I don't know if you saw this please come sir I want to speak to you sir sorry I'm having to call you but the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinonia, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor the law of honor this is not just witchcraft don't don't act as if you don't need people you always need them for your business to rise huh why am i seeing piles of clothes what do you do i sell clothes. you sell clothes honor is what you have violated hold my hands let your business grow now go and excel in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus what is abba so go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Grace for you. I'm not revealing. I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life. And I declare that things will change. In Jesus name why are you here what's this project project what are you doing I want to run your school huh you love children huh and you want to teach I'm seeing you doing something with a blackboard huh blackboard yes ah you are strong you want to establish a school that's what I'm seeing nursery school primary school secondary school yes. that's what you want to do who told you it cannot be done huh it can be done you believe that hold my hands go and honor somebody who's already in having a school and god will open that door for you receive that grace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now we are going to pray for the sick please listen i want this is the last miracle service for the year i want everybody to receive there will be such a heavy mantle transfer after the prayer i just want us to 
in the next few minutes to finish here so i want you to please cooperate with us i've prayed for you you are all blessed in jesus name now please listen all those who are sick in this venue listen please this venue and uh the the overflow by the roadside i want you to just move to the front of your projector the projector screen all of you who are trusting god for a healing miracle no matter how many you are we will pray for you that's why we are here those outside move to your projector screen outside now listen part of those outside can come in not everybody a few of them maybe at the back you can come in then those trusting god for miracles here for you and your loved one now please come up come up quickly come up believing god come up believing god we want to do a thorough work tonight please we want to do a thorough work tonight this is what will happen now those outside is okay for those coming outside um pastor jakes pastor jakes will help me handle the one by this pro uh, the projector stand outside and then a jimmy will go outside please guys let's trust god for grace for people to really get miracles hold on please people need let, let me just pray with you guys let's let's do a thorough work father grace in the name of jesus let your healing power flow let that healing grace lord in the name of jesus let it work let that healing grace be at work let there be results in the name of jesus please come pastor alpha come benga promise michael come all these hands i will tell you where to in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ grace for you let there be a very thorough results thorough results thorough results thorough results thorough results in the name of jesus thorough results pastor um you are michael please you can go outside and help jakes um benga you and promise you can go outside there with a jimmy please just go outside let's see i'll try to handle the ones here um very very fast we need so many more people by god's grace pastor femi come 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 you are here and you are hiding come come and hold my hands let that anointing come upon your life and then you help me here in the name of the lord jesus christ so he will help me here jesus we release your healing power all over this place listen please for all those who are here please listen by the grace of god and it's not pride god has given we're a healing ministry god has given us grace please be patient we are going to hurry up if i don't mention your case don't worry i'll just lay hands on you i want us to cover grounds as much as possible i would have just prayed for you but that's not the instruction god gave us maybe if the ministry becomes too large we can pray but now i want to lay hands on everyone there are people with cancers there are people with all kinds of things just trust god worship team please just create the atmosphere for us if you are tired maybe the media can play something a worship song so that you rest too especially if you want a healing miracle come lay your hand on your stomach father you heal her in the name of jesus thank you jesus lift your voice if if they are if the worship team if you're tired then the media can play something a worship song let's be very fast please as soon as i lay hands on you i want you to believe god and go back thank you jesus let there be miracles now those of you who are hold on those of you who are seated please i permit you to put on your phone call your loved ones whatever their requests are i want to pray this is our last miracle service for 2016 anything that has not been done that must be done before december 31st i want you to write it call your loved ones those online submit your request we are all going to pray thank you jesus go ahead you will do a miracle a miracle today thank you jesus miracle walker you are a miracle walker Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. 
your body this thing everywhere how long one year it just started coming hold my hands let it go now I cost the spirit responsible for this now let her go be healed now this wicked thing it disappears from your skin and lives your life forever it is done darling God bless you your name is me I curse every witchcraft I curse every witchcraft from the village from the village over my life over my life in the name of Jesus in the name of that's where your problem is coming from but I pray for you in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit ah mama something is leaving you in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you. You're with her? Help her, help my mom, please. You need favor in your life and you need speed. These two things. You need favor and speed. Ah! The anointing is still on our mother. Favor and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Say your name is Yahweh. You are miracle working God. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Hey. We sing. Your name is Yah. Baby! 
people like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus. No, 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 nobody like Jesus. No, no, no. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.